up, we open up, and you don't think anything of it. You're like, oh, oh, could that be, is it like Pearl and Marina's helicopter or something over there? Eyes emoji? You don't know what it is, but like, it's like, oh, hey, look, salmon run. Do you think that we might have a loading screen where you could see like your inklings and octolings maybe waiting to be loaded into the game? If they only have it for the trailer, I feel like that'd be a little bit silly, but <laughs> I guess we'll find out in due time, right? Right? And now we have the thing start out here and it's not like too much to see. We get some looks at some of the weapons that we haven't seen too much of because the only footage you've really seen of the inklings like still has been mostly when they're on top of the little tiny special machines. So it's nice to see that they kind of kept their stance in the original game. You get a good look at their brand new gear. I like the way the new gear actually looks in this game. I like the pants. I like the little swoop to it. Now, the person that I'm going to be paying attention to a lot in this is good old Yarwall over here, because Yarwall is our resident charger. You can see him have the charger shot right over there. Wait for it. Look at, look at that. So much for charger not having a laser? Question mark? It could be because the game is still in development, but that just caught me off guard because I was so scared about not having to deal with lasers anymore. Something that was confirmed online also is that all the bosses from Splatoon 2's Salmon Run are coming back, which is pretty interesting. It prevents them from having to make way too many new bosses for this game, but I was so caught off guard by the fish stick guy. Because I've made content before where I was like, hey, obviously, if we have any new bosses, they'll be based off of specials, like the ones in Splatoon 2. But in this, uh, in this game, uh, it's not looking like it's the case. And he's got, look what they did to these poor little guys. Why do they have little sploosh mouths? <laughs> There's so much to take in just from this screen, too. We get access to not only the UI that you can see on the left side of the screen here, but you also get to see probably the most important thing of all in any of these stills is this crab. Who named that? Who named that? They're a genius. I love them. Also very interesting to see that we actually are going back to using some of the Splatoon 1 fonts again. It doesn't seem like this boss is meant to do much but be a time sink. I'm kind of curious if it will stay after you've been all the little guys though. Because it would be great to have an actual high ground at some point in this game. Now, our splat zoning flipper flopper here. He's a... Uh, He's sure something. I look at him and I think that's actually a really awesome design. I really like the way that he looks. But it seems like he just kind of goes away very quickly after you just get rid of his zone. So again, it just seems like a boss that they kind of like threw in here. Like, yep, yep, that's another one. You just burn a little bit of time. It doesn't seem like he's going to be too difficult to deal with as long as you get out of the way. It seems like a Maz, but from above in a way. Another thing of note in this slide and some other ones is that you can see that we've gone back to having more food all over the grounds again during our Salmon Run games. Which means that maybe Mr. Grizz is still trying to get our little salmonid friends over here with just the food? I still don't truly understand why we see us fighting the salmonids in the first place. Because the whole point of the storyline, at least part of what it seemed like, is that we're friends now with the salmonids. It makes you wonder if maybe we were a little bamboozled and maybe there still are a number of evil salmonids out there. Or again, that they might just be being controlled by Mr. Grizz. I'm wondering how much more information we'll get on Samurai before the game actually comes out. Just because I feel like they'll want to keep any other storyline related information, like, out of our hands until the game truly is out. Although honestly, in, like, in reality, and I'm just gonna keep refreshing this gameplay so something's going on in the background while I'm speaking here, but I really think that we're going to get a Salmon Run test fire instead of actually a regular Splatoon 3 test fire. That way they can keep more story elements of the game secret until the game actually comes out while still giving people something to play with while they wait. It'll still be great to be able to play the variety of weapons available in Salmon Run without giving us access to every single little thing. You can now throw the eggs, which is so good. Just even playing last night, I was remembering how often I would end up just not being able to get an egg in just because we simply were unable to get over back to the basket. So first of all, just pausing here, there's a ton of stuff going on. This looks like it's a pretty late game and probably a higher level of Salmon Run. I'm kind of curious if we'll end up being capped in 999, just like in the current game or not, or if we'll have a better way maybe even to track our results, which would be super duper interesting. You can see that we've got our friend Moz over here coming on back. Never miss a beat with Moz. The new map seems really interesting. It seems like it's rather centralized. 
you can see the basket over here on the side. And it looks like everything stays relatively close to the basket. One of the most important things for Salmon Run is the fact that you're able to move around easy peasy through enemy ink, or else you end up having bad things happen real fast. If the entire area is this one big flat location, you're gonna find that a lot of people are gonna get really overwhelmed really quick if they don't keep good look at the ground. Now, <laughs> I remember this team comp they're using right now in this game. Isn't it like, uh, yeah, we got Blaster, Splattershot, Roller, and Charger. I don't feel like these guys are gonna have the best time actually on this particular map. Might be better for Lost Outpost if that one ever comes back. What do you guys think? Do you think we'll actually, like, get any maps back from Splatoon 2 Salmon Run in this? You see that our Snatcher Buddy here has kind of evolved. No longer is he just waddling around the ground, grabbing eggs and leaving. Our boy now has a whole honking propeller attached so he can go as far and as free as he wants. Which honestly is a big upgrade for him. <laughs> I'm kind of curious if now that we can throw eggs, if he'll be able to just swoop on in, take them, and start to fly away. I think that'd be funny, and it'd give them a lot more purpose than just walking up whenever you're not watching. People were talking about how when you go through the roll, you hear the sound of the invincibility go off, but others were able to quickly point out that you do actually take a little bit of damage. <laughs> Thank goodness. People can't tell, though, if it's just, like, the stinger being really weak or not, but you don't take a lot of damage. That's why a lot of people missed it. But if we slow this down quite a bit here, if I go down to 0.25 and we go back through it, you can actually see the damage counter on the left-hand side here, right-hand side, I should say, does actually change just a smidge, which shows that you are taking damage even during that roll. Also, are we straight up in, like, a jail? <laughs> Very important also, we do get to see a little bit of gameplay of the Killer Roll 5.1 on the right-hand side here, which is so big, because now people can maybe stop be worrying about it so much. It seems like you aim all the lasers in one place, and they can be moved ever so slightly. I'm curious if that movement is being controlled by us, or if it's being controlled by the game itself and following a target one that's been chosen. Both of them are fine, but they definitely have different implications. It's kind of like, do you want a stingray that works for you? Or do you want to be placing down five killer whales that you then have the opportunity to aim the whole time? <laughs> I feel like it'll really depend on if after the stingrays go off, if you're able to move around or not. So let's see if that guy can actually move after he places them. It doesn't look like he can, which does imply that you're standing there until it's over. So I think it would make sense that you're able to control the rays to some level of, like, movement or not. Also, crab, crab, smiley face emoji. Using a very strong, like, bullet strafing instead of the big explosion that we've seen beforehand. I like that. <laughs> While you're in the crab also, your little life raft for when you're playing in Samurai has just kind of been put on top of you there. Like, wait, wait I just want to show it because it's a really fun, like, a cute little detail. Because I guess since the life raft doesn't fit inside, so you wouldn't be able to have your ink tank on the back, they were like, oh, shoot. Oh, no, where do we, where do we put the, where do we put the thing on the back? And they were like, why don't we just stick it on top? In this early model, it, uh, it kind of looks like it, uh... It kind of clips through your character's model a bit, but you know, those are the things that we accept when, you know, the game is still ongoing. Like here, just, it kind of looks like it's going right through us a bit there, or at least going through the crab. I guess we'll find out if that changes later on or not. I just want to be able to do that. I want to be able to throw the egg in. Alright, and then we have this ending sequence here where we have our friends uh, partying it up at the end. And this is how you can tell the game is definitely not finished yet. Because <laughs> they're, just, they're just going at it, man. They're just having their fun, but they're not really moving around too much. And then we have this guy, who is uh, aptly named the King Salmonid. And he's, uh, he's a boy, all right. I want to know more about him, like, now. <laughs> I can imagine that he probably scared a couple of people, especially with his, like, pearly white eyes not as not as chompers i doubt these are very strong pearly whites but uh he just looks good they spend so much time like designing him that i can't imagine he won't be something important i'm hoping that he'll maybe be like part of a special wave like maybe instead of mothership well this guy instead it'd be kind of interesting if we somehow have to like go to him to obtain eggs and bring them back because one of the weakest things that people struggle with in salmon run really and truly is just being able to get eggs from a faraway location and bring them all the way back, 
Now that you have the throwing in hand, you could try and like plan it out so maybe a couple people are running eggs constantly and a couple people are like bringing them back over to spawn. If everybody goes running around constantly to try and go to the big guy and go back, maybe you wouldn't be able to finish in time. I think it'd be a really interesting twist on how Samron works, and it might be able to take advantage of the new egg throw mechanic really well. I'm just, I'm just excited for Salmon Run, man. <laughs> I think it's gonna be good. Are you guys excited for Salmon Run? Because I sure am. I think that we'll see more gameplay next, but I think they'll wait a little while longer till they show it to us, just to make sure that they have more stuff ready. Also, I'm just gonna leave this on the note of, uh, look, look at our boy. Look at our boy. <laughs> Why is he drooling like that? Can someone get him a napkin? <laughs>